Welcome back to the Hoppy Hippy Homebrew Channel. Uh, what we've got lined for you today is a, a cherry cider, cherry, a cherry turbo cider. Here's what I'm going to be using today. I've got ten of them, ten cherries. I think I've used them before in a video. Cherry good for wine. Uh, ten liters of apple juice as well from Concentrate. Uh, the usual additive, I'll just use half a bag of these, 20 very berry tea bags. I find in the final flavour you get a nice fruity, it doesn't need sweetened either, so it leaves a nice taste in it. And the cider, this, uh, cider yeast, I'm going to be using Mangrove Jack's M02, 9 grams of that. I've been onto this this year actually, made a couple of batches of cider with this and between that and the fruit tea bags at the end of it, it hasn't need back sweetener in, it's been very fruity indeed at the, the final so certainly looking for that result at this point but we'll check that at the time that it's fermenting and we're going to be, we're going to be bottling it so this is about 10 litres, 10 litres, going to be 20 litres Let's get doing it. The first job that we do is put 20 tea bags into our fermenting vessel. I'm going to heat the kettle up just a slight bit there. And this just infuses some flavour out into the, the vessel. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, twenty. And here you can see we've added a bit of warm water to the bucket there and one of the litres of apple juice just to infuse it. You see the really deep colour there. It's just with one litre of apple juice in it and some water so it gives the whole brew a really nice deep colour. We'll put the lid on that. Let it sit for 5-10 minutes and then come back to it and we'll start adding all the rest of the juice. Okay, I've had to use camera there. I didn't find the other one as versatile as this that I can use handheld. So that's all my juice in there. I'm going to use 19 litres of apple juice. Sorry, t uh, 9 litres of apple juice to the 10 of cherry. Because by the time I add sugar into that anyway, it's going to be over the 20. So. I'm going to put the lid on that for the moment and I've just made a yeast starter there. There we go. And I'll leave that for 10-15 minutes to start rehydrating and we'll show you what it looks like then before we add it to the must. Or what, whatever it is. Cider, must, cider, what, whatever. Guys, in 10 minutes. Okay, so let's get this yeast in here. You can see it's got a bit of wee mix there, but it's, it's actually fermenting, it's bubbling away, so it smells like it smells like a dry oxo cube. Anyway, let's get it in the the solution here. Got a wee swirl about. Pull it in. I'll use some of the stuff that we drew for a wee sample just to mix it get as much yeast stuff aside as we possibly can. Final mix. It's just about 21, 21 degrees there so that's just about perfect. 
and that's it. It's as easy as that. I'll get the lid on it. Put it in a nice place room temperature. Check on it later on. And we will resume this video when it's time to take a final gravy. We'll get, don't know if I'm going to fine it yet or we're we just going to boil it. Probably just going to boil it, I think. I'll see you on the next one. Welcome back to the Hobby Happy Homebrew channel for the Hoppy Hippy Hovel. It's the second of January 2020. We've just had family around and stuff. Place is a mess, as it always is. So I just hope you did Christmas and New Year. Just back to do a review on the cherry cider that we made mid-December there. And uh, we'll see how it is. Bottled it last week. Probably a bit early to taste it at the moment, but you know what? I've hardly had any Christmas and New Year, so I'm going to have a wee shot at it. Just to see how it goes. So, it's in the keg. It's in our keg at the moment, yep. Settle it. First impression is not bad. It isn't perfectly clear. It's, mm, no, it's not bad at all. Good colour. As you can see. Very good colour actually. A nice deep red. Now, let's get into this again just to remind you about what we've done with this. It was a cherry cider. 20 litres of it we made in total and it was with 10 litres of cherry good fruit juice, 9 litres of Tesco's, uh, not their own brand type apple juice but it was a kind of level above that, a bit sweeter stuff from concentrate, 1 bag of sugar, 9 grams of mangrove jack, uh, cider yeast, and 20 very berry tea bags. Now, I, you've seen my channel before. I use a lot of the fruit, cherry, berry, and stuff tea bags in cider and wine. Gives it a nice flavour, I, I think, at the end of it. Some ciders you get as well, especially, is kind of very dry and tart at the end of it. I feel this leaves a nice fruity taste. So we're, uh, we're starting gravity, our original gravity was 1.050 and we had an attenuation of 104% and the final gravity was 0.998 and it gives us a, an alcohol strength ABV of 6.8. So that's not too bad, not too strong. No point going too strong, man. You can only have two or three of them. So down to the nitty gritty now, let's get a wee taste of this. Not a great fruity blast off it originally. Not a great flavour or profile at all actually, let me get a wee taste. bad. Nice and chilled what helps. There's a wee bit of carbonation in there as well. Put it in the kegerator for a few days, four or five days, so another couple of weeks in there would be ideal. Not a great fruity flavour off it, no cherry at all whatsoever. Although the cherry juice was quite cheap stuff, wasn't really a cherry flavour off it really either. Pretty drab. bad. It is not bad. I feel it would be pretty bland if the 20 very berry tea bags weren't in it to inject some extra flavour in there. Very alcoholic. Very, you know you're drinking alcohol, you know that way. It's It's 
it's not been back sweetened at all. Probably could be doing we get a wee bit of back sweetening in it. A kind of dry mouth feel. It is not bad actually, I've made a lot worse. I've definitely made worse. A nice colour. There's absolutely no cherry flavour at all. Put it that way. If any flavour that you're getting is from the berry tea bag, so that's a you've seen what cherry juice I used at the start of this video, I would advise against it. Unless you're maybe going to use a sweetener at the back of it. I don't like too much sweet stuff. It's not bad actually. It's not as what I was expecting, but I was expecting a better flavour. It's crisp. Very crisp and clean. It's a nice aftertaste, isn't that bitter stuff? Mangrove Jack, I've changed onto that yeast the past couple of batches and I've been really impressed with how the, the finishing taste ends up. It's really alcoholic. It's really, it's like it's still giving off CO2. It's starting to, I'm getting a bit of fruit now. Getting a bit of better smell. Right, it's smelling better now actually. I'm getting, I'm getting it now. I'm getting a bit of fruit now actually. Took a while for the taste buds to get it. It's not bad, don't get me wrong. Would I make it again? I certainly would. Would I make it with the cherry juice that I made? Hold on. Thought there was, thought there was revelers coming at my door there. <coughs> no, I wouldn't make it with the cherry good juice. It's not very good. It's not even pretty much remotely cherry, to be perfectly honest with you. So, cheap crap, in my opinion. Maybe good for a juice, for having as a normal drink, not for making cherry my way, because there's absolutely no, no cherry. I like cherries. There's no at all flavour or smell of cherries. But it's a cider that you could you could drink a few pints of it and not get fed up with it. I would definitely it's nice. But I I think the mangrove jack and the berry tea bags have pulled pulled a disaster out the hat here. While I'm on this review, let me get another glass for myself. And a cider that I will recommend to you. This is the second batch of this I've made and it is absolutely outstanding. It's in the other, let me just, it's a bit gassier than the other one, as you see. That was a wet, I should have wet the glass actually there. I should have wet the glass. This is one that I made for Christmas. It's foam cider. No. Cranberry cider. Now this stuff tastes, smells amazing. And this was a 16th of November batch. 20 litres of it. Same again. 1.050. 10 yeast nano 13. 29.94. 7.36. This is just a tad stronger this stuff. No thionines added. It racked it. When did I? 6th sixth, sixth of uh, December there, so it was lying for about three weeks. It was pretty clear before. Like that one, it was quite clear before I uh, I just kegged it. And it's really, really clear. Now, this was made with 10 litres of apple juice and 10 litres of cranberry juice. Two bags of sugar, 
Mangrove Jack Cider Yeast. And uh, I've not got it on here, but I know I'm used 20 of the very berry tea bags as well with that. I get the very berry, it's like a twinings tea bags, I get them out of Lidl, these ones, particular ones. It's 40 tea bags for 79p. And uh, I, I, I use my most of even in ciders, in wines especially. But it's good to put them in ciders. Now this stuff here, I would recommend. I can't do a starting video for it because I didn't do one. But I can show you a review of the of what it is. I don't know if you can see. There's no really a light behind me at this side to show you. Let me show you the difference in colour. Can you see it's much lighter than this one here? Tasted Copperberg and all these very sickly sweety stuff with too much sugar in them. And this, in my opinion, it's not been back sweetened at all. Didn't need it. And yet, the fruit flavours in it is amazing. It tastes sweet. It was fermented to dryness. 0.994 and there was no sugar added, sweetener added to it. So this one I would highly recommend. I will do a video on this the next time. You can still taste it. It's absolutely glorious. It's brilliant. So back to the review of the cherry cider. Let's get a wee taste of this again. Now I've got some of that in my palate. Quite flat. It's not been keg long. Nowhere is near as good as that one to be honest guys. Nowhere near as good. Nowhere near as good as it. Just I think it's just a quality of the fruit juice used. Even the smell of this one just blows that away. I wish I wish it was taste over vision. It, 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 beautiful that stuff. Got another wee batch here. It's been framed in bottling this week. I think I've done a starting video for that anyway, so we'll come back to that later. Right, so that's the cherry cider. Turbo cider. That's my review of it. I would make it with other cherry juice. I'm going to make it. Excuse me. I'm going to make it with other cherry juice to compare it with that stuff. It's got to, cherry has got to retain a cherry flavour, surely. But it hasn't. So, thanks for watching this video anyway. Hope you have had a Merry Christmas and a, hope you do have a prosperous new year. And remember, cranberry is just not only for Christmas, it's for every day of the year. Cheers. Alright guys, thanks very much for coming back. Just a wee final note on the, the cherry cider. So it says it's not as good as the other stuff, in my opinion, but I, my daughter was just heading out there to go to shopping and she tasted and she actually quite liked it. She says it reminds her of something that she's had in Glasgow on the Christmas stalls or whatever. So maybe I'm being a bit over critical about it myself because I've been have been tasting cranberry cider and bloody Cooper Stout as well. So maybe maybe my palate wasn't So the cherry cider it it smells to me very bland, very thin. And it tastes quite thin as well, so maybe just a personal opinion there, so 
But thanks very much, guys. I'm going to go and get my dinner now before I hit the floor because it's a couple of tasting reviews I've done there. And whoo, catch you in the next one.